Manchester United have signed a lot of players since Sir Alex Ferguson retired as manager. 23 to be exact, although we're not going to count Vanya Milinkovic-Savic, the Serbian goalkeeper who we signed because he never got a work permit and he never moved to England. So that's 22 signings. And out of all of those signings, a lot of them, let's be honest, have been absolutely awful. Spectacular failures. Not all of them have, but some of them have. And what I want to do in this video is run through every signing that United have made between 2013 to 2018 and rank them from the worst right through to the best. It could be quite a depressing video, but I think it's important to understand how good or bad United have done in the transfer market in the last five years to build ourselves up to this transfer window, that we, which we absolutely have to nail. So before we get into it, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe and get involved with the community. If you're a regular, drop a like on the video. Let's get straight into this one. Starting off with the worst signing that United have made, and this may come as no surprise to you, but for me, it's Alexis Sanchez. Alexis Sanchez, for me, has been the worst signing we've made since Fergie retired, both for on and off the pitch reasons. On the pitch, he's been a sulky, moody Chilean who has never lived up to the expectation that we expected of him when we signed him from Arsenal, when he was one of the best strikers in the Premier League. He's been dog shit. He really, really has. Sanchez has not delivered on the pitch. But for me, the reason he's the worst signing is because of the catastrophe he's caused off the pitch. United made him the highest paid player in the Premier League. And that has caused major ripples in our dressing room, which has caused the toxic environment that it now is in terms of what players want. That's why Ander Herrera is leaving on a free. That's why De Gea won't sign a new contract. He was a trophy signing. The only reason we signed him is to usurp Man City. And ironically, he's taken us further away from winning any trophies. So for me, because of all the consequences on and off the pitch, Sanchez is the worst signing We've made since Fergie retired, and arguably one of the worst signings in the club's history. In at 21 is Angel Di Maria. What could have been? Remember that chip he scored against Leicester? Ooh. When at that point I thought, yes, we've got a real top class player. But when the toys came out of the pram for Di Maria, they never went back in. And we all knew that he didn't really want to join United in the first place, and he got his move to PSG that he wanted very quickly after. But Di Maria, if you're looking at Sanchez as a sulky Chilean, then what is Di Maria? He's even worse. He just, when the chips were down, he didn't want to perform against the odds. It wasn't for him. And at 67.5 million, the expectation on him, awful signing. Not as bad as Sanchez, but he's 21st on my list. Next up, we've got Morgan Schneidlin in at 20. Signed for around about 30 million. I still don't really understand what happened with Schneidlin, how he failed so badly. That summer we signed Schmidfield, him and Bastian Schweinsteig. We think, Christ, we've actually sorted our midfield problems out. I thought we'd sign one of the best Premier League midfielders in Schneidlin. Alas, we hadn't, we didn't. And I'm genuinely confused as to how it turned out as bad as it did for Morgan Schneidlin because he was a shadow of that player that was at Southampton that was fantastic there. Instead, we just got a budget Schneidlin, as far as I'm concerned, I suppose he, some may argue he was always budget in the first place. But for me, he's 20th in the list. And his midfield partner, Bastian Schweinsteiger, is coming in at number 19. The Deutsche Fußballmeister ended up being the Deutsche Fußball cheerleader, didn't he? Fantastic at social media, said all the right things, didn't do it on the pitch because we signed him when he was too old. I remember that performance from Schweinsteiger away at Arsenal when he was used as a sole defensive midfielder as one of the worst midfield performances I've ever seen from anybody in the United shirt. It wasn't his fault that Van Howe used him in the wrong way. But Schweinsteiger was signed years after we should have signed him, or at least gone for him. And it didn't work out whatsoever. Great cheerleader. Celebrations were fantastic. Decent on social media. Bad signing. So he comes in at number 19. And in at 18 is one I'm really frustrated about personally, Memphis Depay. When we signed him and he was linking up with Luke Shaw prior to his injury down the left-hand flank, you think, we've signed a real star here. But Memphis, it didn't, what it catastrophically didn't work out. Maybe Van Howe and the, the hard taskmaster that he was, was the wrong sort of manager for a player whose ego was just as big as his confidence. But Memphis always seemed focused off the pitch more than he was on the pitch. 
And again, a bit like Di Maria when the chips were down, he didn't want to respond. He didn't want to go in the face of adversity. And that disappointed me. You know, he's gone on to shine again when he's moved on to Lyon. But in the Premier League, Memphis failed spectacularly. And I remember that summer because Liverpool was signing Roberto Firmino. And it looked like we had usurped them and got Memphis. and think that was a big coup. Firmino is now part of one of the best attacking three in world football. But Memphis is at Lyon. And that is a massive disappointment because I thought it was going to be so much better. So he comes in at number 18. And then at 17, Radamel Falcao. The player who, it was a gamble to sign him on loan. About six million, I think we paid for him as a loan fee. He was injured. Injuries have played him and United was supposed to be the springboard for him to relaunch his career. That ended up being Monaco after United and not United. It was a gamble that didn't pay off. I don't begrudge Falcao for it. He got a stand innovation from Old Trafford in his last appearance there, but it didn't work out. Well, I'd still put him above other signings and that's why he's coming in at 17. Then in at 16, Marcus Rojo. Man, Rojo's a crazy, crazy dude, isn't he? He may as well be a wrestler rather than a footballer. Apart, Rojo would be further down my list, aside from that purple patch he had in Mourinho in our Europa League winning season prior to his injury. He had a really good purple patch. I think he was playing as, as a centre-back more than a left-back. And he was really good for a few months. And I thought, maybe I'm wrong about Rojo. Mm, I wasn't. Definitely, definitely wasn't. And he should never have been given a contract extension. He shouldn't be at the club. He should be out of the club this summer. As a centre-back, Rojo is an accident waiting to happen. Always has been. As I said, he's more of a wrestler than a footballer. He's a madman. But he comes in at number 16. Then in at number 15 is Henrik Mkhitaryan. I remember when we signed Henrik Mkhitaryan. I thought, Christ, we've actually gone, <laughs> and gone and done it. He was incredible at Dortmund. I think he had like 40 goals and assists between them in the season. Absolutely outstanding. But he's automatically at this point in the list because of his goal in the Europa League final. But other than that, Mkhitaryan is another one who, flaky, flaky player. Arsenal was a perfect club for him. Really is. You, you can see that being just a lovely little comfortable fit. But Mkhitaryan was renowned for his, not his attitude problems, but his Struggling to adapt to life at Dortmund took him a couple of years and he never really adapted to life at United, did he? You know, it took him a while to get a goal and he had a little flurry of assists. Other than that, Mkhitaryan, massively disappointed as well. So that's why he's in at 15. And just ahead of him is Matteo Darmian at 14. Remember when we signed him and that first couple of months, I thought we've actually signed our replacement for Gary Neville. That's how good he looked at the start. And then he went to Arsenal away. Had a terrible performance. I think it was when we were 3-0 down very quickly. And Darmian never recovered. Went into the shadows. But Darmian's on this point in the list because he's been a consummate professional the whole way through. Not a very good player, but always jumped in when called upon and did a job. A very distinctly average player. That's why he's not being a good signing, but he's definitely at this point in the list because of his attitude, I feel. Now, 13th on my list is Marouin Fellaini. I always hated Fellaini for just being a David Moyes relic that lasted at the club under multiple managers. But Fellaini, begrudge him if you want, hate him if you want, he scored plenty of important goals for United over the years that he was at the club. Now, he was never a United-style player. We should never have signed him in the first place. We should have signed Fabregas, but we balls around so much that we ended up paying more than Fellaini's release clause, which expired a few weeks earlier. That's how bad we are in the transfer window. But Fellaini, is, as much of a Moyes relic he was, he performed under multiple managers and, again, had a better attitude than so many other United players. So that's why I'm putting him in at number 13. You may disagree with that. Let me know where you would put Fellaini. Number 12 on my list, I'm going for Eric Bailly. Eric Bailly, at the very start of his United career, showed so much promise. And we thought, Mourinho's unearthed a gem here a proper defensive gem. Had real pace to burn, confident and strong in his tackling. Just looked good. Unfortunately for Bai, since then, he's just been a catalogue of injuries. One after the other. Stopping him from progressing, coming back, getting injured. Bit like Phil Jones, I suppose. I'm putting him 12 on the list and maybe that's slightly harsh. I don't think it is, but I feel that Bai is always going to be remembered as that madman 
who just got injured a lot. Which is a shame, but that his legacy at the moment, that's what it is at United, and that's why he's number 12 for me. Now, we're getting towards the top 10 now, but just outside it, I've gone for Nemanja Matic. In that start of his first season when we got him, I thought, wow, Matic is delivering. But unfortunately for Matic, he's old. His legs are old. And he was exhausted. He got more and more exhausted as the seasons went on. And now he doesn't suit United at all. He was magnificent at the start, right alongside Paul Pogba in the midfield too. I remember it. I thought Mourinho's done a real job here bringing him from Chelsea. But it hasn't lasted. And that's why I'm putting Matic in as number 11. And in at number 10, I've gone for Romelu Lukaku. Now, you may disagree with me on this one. Let me know if you do. But Romelu Lukaku, a good goal scorer. I'd say nothing more than that. Lukaku, when he was on form, United's football had to be geared everything towards getting the most out of Lukaku. And it worked. Got 30 goals, basically. In his first, actually, I think he did. Or did he get 30 goals? Anyway, he got near 30 goals in his first season. That's a fantastic return for any goal scorer. But I don't really rate him. Not completely. Not in the likes of Van Persie. Not in the likes of Rooney. Not in the likes of some of the strikers that we've seen at this football club. But Lukaku, for me, has been a lot better than so many other signings. So I'm putting him in at number 10. In at number nine, I've gone for Victor Lindelof. Lindelof had a, a pretty indifferent first season. I think it's fair to say that, isn't it? But his second season, massive improvement. Huge improvement from Lindelof to the point where going into next season, I think if we sign a big leader as a centre-back, he can partner him. And that'll be a good partnership. I think Lindelof has got room to grow, room to become an even better player. So I'm putting him in at number nine now. But if he continues on the same upward trajectory that we saw last year, he could go higher, I think, in the future. Now, in at number eight, I'm putting Daily Blind. And I think Blind doesn't really get enough recognition for how good a utility player he was at United. He was nothing more than a utility player, but he did that role brilliantly. Properly the Dutch John O'Shea. Centre-back, defensive midfield, left-back, left-wing-back. He was never great in any of those positions, but he was very good. And I think he was one of the smartest signings that we've done. You know, it didn't cost too much. He was never supposed to be a first-team player week in, week out, every single time in your squad. In your, in your starting eleven, sorry. But I think Blind was a good signing. And that's why I'm putting him in at number eight. In at number seven, I've gone for Anthony Martial. Signed for 50-plus million from Monaco as a teenager. He delivered in his first season. It's just a shame that we haven't been able to see that Tony Martial since. Not really. There's been patches, certainly prior to Alexis Sanchez being signed. It's another bad reason why Sanchez was such a crap signing. It killed the momentum that Martial was building that season. But Martial, he signed a new contract. He's staying at the club. But Martial has to improve and get back to that first season. He's up here because of that first season, as far as I'm concerned. And the potential just like Victor Lindov, is there for him to go upwards next year. And I really hope that happens. But Martial, for me, goes in as the seventh best signing we've made since Fergie went. In at number six for me, I've gone for Paul Pogba. Pogba is a magical player. That period under Solskjaer, that three-month period where he was literally Europe's informed player, was the sort of Pogba we had hoped to see the whole time since rejoining United, and we haven't. And there's been quality and frustration in equal measure. But Pogba is one of the world's best players. He's come back to the club where he spent his youth. And I think he's a good signing. That's why he's here at number six. But Pogba has all the ability to fire himself up to number one if he wants to. And I hope that happens next year. But for me, Pogba can't be considered in that top five yet. But I think he will be soon. Let me know what you think about that. I've gone for Pogba at six. Just ahead of Pogba, I've gone for Luke Shaw at number five. I'm pretty certain that if Shaw hadn't have got that horror injury, which ruined, let's be honest, two years of his career at the club, you might argue that he could be number one. But Shaw has shown such determination to get back from that horror injury, to re-establish himself, and be named our player of the year, which was a bit of a joke considering how many goals our defence conceded, but that's another argument. But for sure himself, and especially in the face of the tough love treatment that he got from Mourinho, he's fought through that. And he's come back and he's United's first choice left back. 
And he deserves credit for that. And as I said, I think had that injury not happened, he would be out and out United and England's first choice left back. Maybe that can still happen in the future. But for me, sure, he gets into my top five. Coming in at number four is probably my favourite post-Fergie signing in Ander Herrera. The little Spanish shithouse that he was. Always did it with a smile on his face. Herrera, you know, it's a bit of an acrimonious departure, isn't it? He's going to PSG on a free transfer for more money. That takes away a little bit of the shine for me. But it doesn't devalue the years that he has been a United player. Not as far as I'm concerned. And I would put him in, in my top four. Not many players got United more than Herrera did. He seemed to be playing for more than just the wages. And I don't know whether that's me being naive, but that's how I felt towards Herrera. And that's why I'm sad that he's leaving. But that's the situation we find ourselves in. Because of the Sanchez wages, other players are asking for more. Herrera being one of them. But for me, he's still in my top four. Now, coming into the top three, Sergio Romero, eh? Who would have thought that when we signed him on a free transfer from Sampdoria, that we would get the best backup goalkeeper in football? And remember that Romero hasn't always just been a backup. That season in the Europa League, Romero was sensational the whole way through. And I think it's fair to say that Romero has been the consummate professional. Even when David De Gea has been out of form and he's been sat on the bench, he's not said a bad word about United, about a manager, about anything. Romero has been an outstanding signing for United as far as I'm concerned and one of the ones that we really did get right. In at number two, Juan Mata. Now I could just say one word here that would justify his position at number two. Wanfield. Those two goals he scored at Anfield have put him down in United folklore and that will never change. Throughout the history years, we'll always go back to that as being one of the greatest moments at Anfield. But other than that, Mata has been... A fantastic signing for United. Has scored plenty of important goals, but he's a great professional. He's a great man. He's just a great person, really, isn't he? Matter. And it'd be sad to see him leave, but now he doesn't really fit the Solskjaer system because it's more high tempo. He's been sidelined somewhat. But Matter, his attitude, everything about him, and those goals at Anfield, he's number two on my list. And of course, that takes us now to number one. And was there ever any doubt that this was going to be Zlatan Ibrahimovic? If there was, I'd be surprised. Because Ibrahimovic, he came to United cocksure of his own ability and he delivered. That season was our best season post-Fergie. Won the Europa League, won the League Cup. Ibrahimovic cruelly missed out on the final of the Europa League because of injury, but he delivered in that year on everything. 30 goals, I think he scored, or just shy because of his injury. Ibrahimovic, man, a free transfer. The sort of confident, arrogant swagger that United have desperately missed. He had it in abundance. And it was a fantastic signing. It really was. And just to have Ibrahimovic playing in the United shirt was a big thing in itself. But for him to deliver in the way he delivered, outstanding. And for me... Zlatan Ibrahimovic is the single best signing that we have made since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. So that is my list there. 22 players. Ibrahimovic, Mata and Romero at the top with Sanchez, Di Maria and Schneilin at the bottom. Now this video is clearly going to cause a lot of debate. That's not the intention behind it. But this is my own personal opinion. On the players that we've signed, some of them have worked out. Some of them have been great. But some of them, most of them, haven't. That has to change in the summer of 2019. And maybe I'll do a video at the end of this summer ranking our transfers in terms of what I feel has been the best transfer. But let me know if you like this video, if you want more videos like this. Let me know some ideas in the comments below. If you are new to United People's TV, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, take it easy.